around 2010, no, I'm sorry, it was about 2008, I built my first house. My dream was to have a dedicated home theater space. I had a room upstairs where I could do that. And then the first mortgage bill came in and I was, there was no way that I was going to be able to afford to put my dedicated home theater space in. So I didn't. Uh, ultimately, I did wind up buying a pair of nice tower speakers and a little subwoofer. And I had that for my living room and it was okay. Well, around 2013 or so, built another house. And this time I was certain that I was going to have a home theater space. It took me about two years, maybe three, but eventually I got to the point where I did have a dedicated home theater and I've got a video on it. If you're interested, you can check it out. I'll put the link up here, but in a nutshell, it was a DIY adventure that I went on. I bought from a closed down theater in town. It's actually a church that bought out a closed down theater and the sound guy took all the stuff, put it in storage, and he sold all of the speakers for little of nothing. So for about $4,000 in total, I had a 5.2 setup, 120 inch screen, built my own rack, built my own speakers, used active DSP for the crossovers and equalization to build the speakers, the mains, LCR. And uh, what else? Built the screen. I think I just said that. It was a baffle wall screen. And I would say, you know, if you were to have gone and done it brand new, you probably would have had about $8,000 in total into it. But I had much less because I did so much of the work myself, piece parting things and building things like the second stage seating uh, over the span of about two, maybe three years. Now, I had to sell that house last year. And right now I'm in a rental home. So recently I've been looking at homes and I think I found something that I'm going to get. And I've been thinking about, do I want to go with a home theater again? And for me, the answer right now is no. And, and some of the reason is two part. One is I don't have the dedicated space. I actually, I kind of do, but it's not a large space and I'm going to do something else, else with that space. But the other thing is when I had a home theater, just didn't use it that much. I I rarely used it. Most of the time for convenience, we wound up watching television downstairs and stayed busy most of the time. So I just didn't have a lot of the extra time to go and sit and watch a movie or a series or something like that. Granted, it was cool when I was able to, but it was just rare. So now I'm looking at what I want to do for this new room or this new house. And I'm thinking, do I want to go with a theater in the living room? Do I want to do in walls? Do I want to go with just a stereo? Do I want to just do a sound bar and put a dedicated two channel listening setup in a separate room? Cause I do have the space for that. And I'm really still unsure about what exactly I want to do, but that made me think about some of the things that I've seen in the last six months. One of those is it seems to me, and maybe this is just because this is what I'm fed via YouTube and other social media, but it seems to me that the home theater space used to have budget, mid-budget, and then the outlandish stuff. And the outlandish stuff was maybe 10%. You're talking tens of thousands of dollars, maybe more from the guys that we see on ABS Forum and on other social media platforms. The middle ground stuff maybe 40%. And then the other 50% was the more budget friendly. And, and just to give you some numbers, when I say more budget friendly for a dedicated home theater space, I'm talking $3,000, $4,000, and then maybe four to 10,000 and then 10,000 plus for the more extreme bills, okay? These are just kind of the numbers that I'm going with, so you have an understanding. Now, I wanna be clear that as I say these things, I'm not talking about anyone specific. There's nobody specific that I've seen that I feel this way about. It's just the general trend of this hobby, of this space that I'm noticing. It seems now what you have is there's more of the extreme and more of the budget, but there's less middle ground. It seems like a lot of that middle ground has shifted more toward the budget. I'm sorry, more toward the extreme. And I'm seeing builds that are just insane. They're, man, they are inspiring. They are incredible looking, but 
my concern based on some of the comments that I see in various places is that people who are getting into the home theater hobby, number one, they may not have a dedicated home theater room to use. We'll kind of take that and set that off to the side. So then you're left with, what can I do? Even if you have a dedicated home theater, you probably don't have tens of thousands of dollars to throw at it unless you're just doing really well or you've you made certain arrangements in your life to accommodate that. That leaves you with looking at some of these home theaters that are nuts. And we're talking fifteen, twenty thousand dollars for a processor, trend off processors, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars for Kaleidoscape, you know, where you want to go and view movies from. And there are other things that are grossly expensive. And I don't mean grossly as in it's not worth it because if you've got the money, maybe it's worth it to you. And I'm not saying that I wouldn't enjoy it if I had a lot of extra money to do it. But in terms of compared to what you can get from just buying the Blu-ray or a more affordable DSP preamplifier option, something maybe from like Monoprice or Emotiva or the like, you yeah, I know you don't get some of the same features, but when you're talking ten to fifteen thousand dollar gap on just one piece of hardware, man, you know. So then you look at this hobby as a newcomer, and you think, "All right, well, I've got a thousand dollars, and I want to do this, but all I'm seeing is the crazy stuff that one piece of gear is five times my budget." One piece of their gear is five times my budget, and now you feel deflated. Now, that would be a certain personal thing. One could say, hey, well, maybe you just need therapy. But realistically, I've been in this hobby for a long time, and I've been deflated when I see other things. And I feel like I'm doing really well. This thing is pretty awesome. And then somebody comes in and shows me their stuff, and I'm like, dang. And it's not a hater. It's nothing like that. And you can still give props to somebody, but then also feel like, dang. Well, my system kind of sucks and it, and it messes with your psyche and then maybe it takes the wind out of your sails. And then maybe you start thinking, well, if I can't do that, then it's not worth doing it at all. And the point of this video really is to say that if you're thinking that, don't think that. If you're thinking that with even just stereo speakers, don't think that. I review so many things from $80 powered little bookshelf speakers to $25,000 DSP monstrous speakers, $80 subwoofers, $3,000 subwoofers. I can tell you that in that price range, you can certainly get a setup that sounds and looks even phenomenal without spending a whole lot of money. And I really just want to make sure that people aren't discouraged because I had to start somewhere. The people with the crazy systems, most of them started somewhere. They didn't just start off with a crazy system with a blank check and say, all right, custom installer, go build this thing. They started out building up to where they are now. And I just don't want people to get confused and to feel like your system or your system goals aren't worth sharing, aren't worth going after. And the enjoyment of your system and the enjoyment even of putting the pieces together and shopping around and getting excited about what you're going to do Put that at the front. Don't worry about what the other people are doing and let that psych you out and keep you from doing what you want to do. The entry into this hobby can be as low as you want it to be. Don't go out and buy junk. Hopefully you've watched enough of my channel to kind of identify some bad things. And if you've watched other people, you can kind of identify those as well. But just don't let it deflate you. Set your goals, set your budget, look around, get inspiration. And if you can, take the time to DIY things. If you have to spread your build out over a year or two, then you can do that as well. Just because you don't have the money or the means to build a dedicated multi, 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 multi thousand dollar setup doesn't mean it's still not going to be enjoyable to you when you do finally put your system together and sit back on your couch with your friends and you watch the latest movie and you feel that excitement about not just the media that you're watching or the content that you're taking in, but that feeling of, I've arrived. If you've set a goal to do something, then celebrate that goal once you've gotten there. And 
don't let these mega buck systems make you feel like what you're doing isn't worthwhile. And that's it. Anyway, uh, if you have any comments, I really would be curious to know what you think. If you're seeing the same trends on your social where you feel like, man, I can't do anything if I'm not spending fifteen or twenty thousand dollars on this piece of hardware, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna benefit. Then what? What, what good am I? I'm, I can't enjoy my system if I don't have this. Let me know if you feel that way. Let me know if you're kind of seeing these trends as well, or maybe if it's just social media pushing these trends on me because I clicked one too many videos and went down the rabbit hole. At any rate, I will talk to you all later. I hope you have a good day, night, weekend. Take care.